The dehydration protocol for E12 is similar to all dehydration protocols. Uh, the slices, once they were cut and cleaned, have been in cold acetone. And so each day we want to uh, look at the specimens and move them in the acetone once a day. This uh, enables the, the acetone to come close to the um, uh, slices and bring new acetone in to allow the acetone to circulate around the specimens to make them uh, the best dehydration possible. And so we can take and um, dehydrate, check the, we can take and check the acetone purity by using an acetonometer. The acetonometers are um, calibrated to a certain uh, temperature. This one is calibrated to 20 degrees centigrade or, uh, or um, room temperature. And so we take and put this in uh, the acetone after it's warmed up and we can get a reading to see what the percent is. And we see it goes down, down, down. And uh, it's going to uh, read about 100%. Uh, so we know the acetone is good. So we can leave the uh, specimens in here until we're ready to uh, change it in about three days. So it's about 100%. So we will again uh, demonstrate why we need to warm the cold acetone to room temperature. Because if we use cold acetone with the same uh, acetonometer that's calibrated to 20 degrees, we put it in and we see that uh, we've not got uh, our specimens dehydrated very well. So there's 5% uh, different difference from the cold acetone because of the calibration of the hydrometer or acetonometer. So uh, a caution that we want to remember. So next day we'll, we will um, move the uh, specimens around a little bit and uh, after three days uh, we will change the acetone uh, bath so that we get, are sure that we get the best dehydration and at that time uh, if it's 100% uh, then we know that our uh, dehydration is complete. The dehydration process varies with the thickness of the tissue. So we can calculate by using uh, one millimeter of, for each uh, thickness of the slice. We'll calculate one and one half days uh, dehydration time. So these slices are between three and four millimeters thick. So we can say then that we have uh, six days of dehydration time maximum. And uh, so when six days is up, we will have changed this one time and we will have thoroughly dehydrated specimens. Shrinkage is always a problem with dehydration. So we, how can we prevent this? Minim minimize it is one. We can use very cold acetone. Minus 25 is the best. It will help prevent shrinkage the uh, most that is possible. We also can uh, use uh, uh, high percentage acetone to uh, prevent uh, shrinkage and by changing the acetone uh, when, when it's time to change it. Yes, uh, we need to move, remove fat tissue from the body slices because fat does not impregnate well and uh, so it's good to get the fat out as well as we want to see between, between the various uh, cellular structure. So by removing the fat, we can make the specimen semi-transparent and see what we would like to see. And by doing that, we can do it two ways. One, after dehydration, always after dehydration, we can uh, bring the specimens out to room temperature 
And at room temperature, acetone, uh, the specimens will dehydrate much quicker and much nicer. Uh, it will take uh, uh, anywhere from one, two to three weeks. Um, and how do we know that we're getting ac fat out, out of the specimens? The, f the, the uh, only way to tell is by looking at the color. The acetone will go from pure white, c clear color, to a yellow color. And so as long as the acetone turns yellow when you have it at room temperature, then you need to keep dehydrating if you want a good dehydrated specimen. The other thing we can use is methylene chloride or dichloromethane. It's a very powerful degreaser and we can degrease in uh, one third to one fourth the time using uh, dichloromethane. Um, again, the uh, dichloromethane will change colors so that as the fat comes out, the dichloromethane, which is clear to begin with, will become uh, turbid. Safety conditions. This is for demonstration. Acetone should always be used under a hood, a fume hood to exhaust the fumes, the same as methylene chloride should be uh, used also. And uh, with methylene chloride especially, uh, even under a fume hood, uh, a respirator is desired to uh, minimize exposure to these chemicals.